Hello, it's the 4th of September 2019 and today brings me to Swinyard's car park which is just below Swinyard Hill and on the edge of Castle Morton Common. Now this is day two of my walk across the Malvern Hills so I'm going to use my OS map app on my phone again so that I stay on the right track. From the car park, I took the road eastwards, away from the hills, and followed it for 300 yards. Immediately after passing Barrow Downs farmhouse, I took the track on the right. After only a short distance, the paths divided. Ignoring the one which swung to the left, I continued forward on a curving path which ran roughly southeast. There were some lovely open views over the countryside ahead of me, but when I occasionally looked back in the direction from where I'd just been walking, I was completely overwhelmed by the vista of the wonderful Malvern Hills. Could just make out Chase End Hill there where I started this adventure which of course is the most southerly of all the Malvern Hills and the next one which of course is Ragged Stone Hill. So today I should be doing the next one on from Ragged Stone which you can't see at the moment but it's hidden up there in the woods. Looking forward to exploring it in a little while. As I crossed Hollybed Common, I could see houses ahead, with a parking area and seats. Meeting a crossing path, I turned right with this to reach Mill Pond on my left. The pond is stocked with bream, carp, roach, rudd and tench. It is a delightful spot on a summer's day, with fishermen dozing over their rods, coots dabbling through the lily pads, and dragonflies skimming the water. I've got all these ducks coming to visit me. Perhaps they think I'm going to feed them. Sadly, I'm afraid they're going to be disappointed.
From the pond, I continued with the path heading slightly southwest in the direction of Ragged Stone Hill. Soon I reached Hollybush, a small village in Worcestershire, close to the borders of both Gloucestershire and Herefordshire. There is a church and a village hall. The post office closed some years back, as did the stone quarry. At the time of the 1901 census, there was a blacksmith, and a number of residents were recorded as being glove makers, along with quarrymen, postmen, and farm labourers. All Saints is a small church built of local stone with limestone dressings, created for the local miners in 1869 as a chapel of ease to Castle Morton. The architect was Frederick Preedy, who also designed the stained glass of the east window. The east end was extended in 1929. All Saints is open daily during daylight hours. Walking to the A438 Hollybush Pass, I turned right to follow the road westwards. I passed the tin tabernacle of the Hollybush church rooms, dating from 1915. These corrugated iron buildings did sterling service for churches, parish halls, scout huts and the like. Continuing up Hollybush Pass, I soon came to the old red telephone box, which I had reached on my last walk. So from this point onwards, I would be making my way for the next hill in the Malvern Range. At the summit of Hollybush Pass, I crossed into Herefordshire, and just beyond here, I reached Hollybush Car Park on the right, at the foot of Midsummer Hill. Well, this is where I rejoin the Malvern Ridge again, so I'm about to climb the third of the Malvern Hills. I took the path which ran steeply up the hillside. to the trees for a while before emerging into the open again as I continued to climb the windswept slopes of Midsummer Hill. I couldn't see anything to the east at this point which included nearby Hollybush Hill. However, there were great views across Herefordshire to the west which included a large obelisk not too far away.
I could also see Eastner Castle about two miles in the distance. It's sure windy today. Oh, my God, is it blowing a gale. But it's not cold and the walk is still absolutely fantastic. The 937-foot summit of Midsummer Hill, with its extensive fort, is believed to have been occupied for 450 years, with traces of huts suggesting a relatively large community. The long occupation of the hill came to an end when the Romans, in their campaign to secure the western borders, violently evicted the residents in 48 AD. Upon reaching the summit, I found a strategically placed stone shelter, which seemed the perfect spot to stop for lunch. I was now able to enjoy clear views across the Worcestershire countryside to the east. Well, there's nothing nicer than sitting here on the Malvern Hills with a cheese and pickle sandwich. After lunch I moved on and began my descent from the summit of Midsummer Hill as I continued north. When I came to the Malvern Hills just over five years ago, that particular trip was very much a whistle-stop tour. But apart from that, what I do remember was at the time I was very hung up. Okay, I've been a bit unfair on myself there. I was very focused. I was very focused on a very personal family issue at the time. And I remember spending that day here in the Malverns talking about that family issue. And I was perhaps spending more time talking about that than I was actually looking at the countryside around me. Whereas now that I'm back in the Malverns, I'm here to enjoy the Malverns in their glory and explore them in much more detail. No family issues to talk about at all this time. My path dropped down and curved westwards. At the bottom of the descent, I joined a rough lane, where I turned right. I passed Midsummer Cottage to reach a junction of paths at the entrance to Eastner Park. Well, that's today's walk nearly completed. So all I've got to do is turn right down that track there, and that'll take me back to Swin Yard Car Park. But before I do that, I'm just going to take a short detour along here because I want to get a closer look at the obelisk. Eastner Obelisk, sometimes referred to as Summer's Obelisk, was erected when building work started on Eastner Castle in 1812. The obelisk is a monument to various distinguished members of the Summer's Cox family, 
the greatest of whom was John Somers, Lord Chancellor in 1700, an advisor to William III, William of Orange, who arrived from the Netherlands with a glorious revolution in 1688. Another is Philip James Cox, an intelligence officer on Wellington's staff, who died at the Siege of Borgos in the Peninsular War on the 8th of October 1812, six months after work had started on the castle. His father, later First Earl Summers, commissioned Robert Smirk, the architect of the castle, to build the obelisk at the same time, and also found a space to add his own name to it. Having taken in the fantastic views and learnt something of the past history of the Summers Cox family, I retraced my steps to the gate. I walked straight on down the track which falls through the deep cleft between Midsummer Hill and the Gullet's Quarry, which I was approaching. The pool beneath the quarry is deep and cool. Large fish glide through the clear waters, and occasionally a heron may be seen fishing. Jackdaws raise a noisy chorus on the quarry face, and in summer, reckless youths dive off the high rocks into the pool. I took the path that ran alongside the quarry pool to join a metal track where I passed a cottage as I headed back to Swinyard Car Park. So, that's the end of my walk. I'm back at Swinyard Car Park where I started this morning. So, another lovely day here in the Malvern Hills. And the great thing about it is, I know I've got a lot more still to see. So when I'm back here again next time, I'll be still continuing northwards and seeing the next hills in the range. So, hopefully I'll be back within the next few weeks or so. And I must say, I'm looking forward to it already.